next talk is a little bit different, but it's uh, about coins again. So not so much different, but uh, uh, I think the, uh, the important thing is that one down there, because they are giving us money. Um, so I need to, to spell them out that the uh, budget for sponsor mind shift is kind of investing money in us and we are trying to do, good, do a good job. Um, the CNT project is um, a DFK project for three years, but it was already uh, uh, started three years ago without me. So the people from, from Berlin um, basically collected coin data for a special region for specific periods and they kind of um, imported those data from various sources, um, uh, not related to linked open data, but they imported uh, what they get. Um, how they did it? Well, basically, going back to, to the people <coughs> before uh, getting lost, so Daniel Althoff is a uh, um, more computer scientist, uh, digital heretic uh, specialized. Um, and, and most of the others, like Ulrike Peter, Bernhard Weiser, are more the um, numismatic people. So, um, the situation in, in many projects is that we have a lot of experts, but very few computer scientists. Because they are rather expensive, or not so easy to get, and, and uh, um, we have have so many jobs outside in banks, etc., that getting spending a lot of money, so it's uh, kind of they're disappearing. Um, this means that a lot of computers, uh, non-computer scientists doing this job, what normally a computer scientist does, and, and that's great, uh, but they're kind of doing everything. So they had some scripts. Uh, so so Daniel did, wrote some scripts that did some some unification on, on on the different sources to put them together, but there was still a hell of a lot of work done by single persons looking at each data set saying okay this is correct and it's now it's approved and now it can it's allowed to be <coughs> online and it's then shown in the uh, in the web so and and this means that uh, data quality was was not really uh, hanging very high because you also need the people that implement something that pointing not with the finger but at least showing here are potential errors in there uh, what is the goal on, on, on the CMT project? Uh, the goal is very similar to what we saw with the Roman Imperial coinage. The main difference is there are no RIC volumes. There is no agreed on the community agreed typology. There are various typologies that are kind of overlapping here and there, but there is not the, an accepted typology in, in the Greek uh, coinage. And, and they are kind of working on and this project is trying to set up um, a typology uh, for this Trakian area. And the goal is not to have something like this red line, but to have something that is more, more uh, clear, more structured and more easy to, to map to. And, and I didn't draw a single line because it's clear that there are certain cases and you need to differentiate, you need to adapt these uh, this cases so it will not be a, a, a straight line. But at least it should be more more straight in there than another way around. Um, so what is uh, this? This picture is very similar to the one you saw in my first presentation, uh, since basically I'm doing the same stuff there as well. Um, is there? No, it's not. And um, what I'm doing there, I'm concentrating on on this upper level. So really. Uh, on what is in the database and what is in the in the type description. And since we in CNT we define our own typology, we set also up the uh, type descriptions and we link the coins to the uh, types. So we have the same thing. And what I'm doing there is something we also David and I also presented in um, at Atlanta last year, where we said, okay, let's um, take all all this information. And we, we put it in a in a way where we can uh, work with it uh, in a more generic approach, meaning we don't apply those consistency checks on our relational database. We apply the consistency check on uh, on the ontology. So we basically map 
the CNT data to the ontology of numisma.org. And then we write our consistency queries there. This gives us a great advantage that our rules we define there can directly also apply to the database I was talking before. But it could also be applied to any other database that is conformant and using the same ontology in the same way of modeling. And, and then the rest is just programming and, and, and doing the, the queries. Um, in Atlanta, we, we promoted what is called uh, semantic web rule language, it's will. Um, unfortunately, we had some performance issues because we're not scaling out and the, the, the request you had before on uh, Florian's talk. Um, with, uh, so we, we stick to plain Sparkle queries, which is performance-wise uh, much easier, but you don't have the inference included. So you need, if you write the queries, you need to be aware that this is not automatically done, so you need to write them more complex. Um, but the output is something that looks uh, um, would be, uh, I think, uh, it's, it's uh, Excel, so, so Tim Berners-Lee would probably come around and grab some stairs, uh, stars for me because it's uh, not not CSV file. But uh, the issue is that the people normally, it's, it's more handy for them to really work with, with Excel sheets rather than with CSV files. Um, so what we do, we, we have a various bunch of, of queries. Um, in fact, under, under each of these, or, or most of those queries, there are different sub-queries included, so it's not just one thing, there are different things underneath. And we, we split them in, in consistency checks, so this is really where we say, well, that's probably something you need to look at, it's not, it's not consistent. Um, we have the issue of uh, not existing values, where you might think, okay, maybe this is an important field, so it was told to me that archaeologists are very keen on dating fields, so you should probably have at least dating fields and other things. Or if you're talking about coins, probably the weight and the diameter are, are standard things you want to enter. But of course, there are sources from, the, from, from, from books or from other places, you don't have that information, so then that's the way it is. You cannot invent it. Right? Um, and we also have some queries on outliers, so if you have a uh, tiny, tiny little coin that is two kilos, that's probably something wrong. Yeah. But uh, in, in, the, in the, uh, uh, my experience so far with the CNT data, was, uh, I found a few outliers, but then they came back and said, no, no, that's, that's all correct, um, these outliers are, are fine. So, okay, then, then that's fine, and so, so this is green. So, in fact, this is going to the area what you also mentioned there. It's, there is already a lot of work done there for data quality to have some uh, matrix. Uh, I would call this a fingerprint, but it would be great to have such a fingerprint or a matrix and it must don't have to be this one, but it's just the idea I want to promote and, and transport. Uh, and, and, and transport also the beauty of linked open data, since you have the chance to model it in a certain way and link it to, to others, you, you have the chance to now put your fingerprint on your data and say, this is, at least these checks have been done and this is how it looks like. And, and this gives probably very much uh, a, a much higher trust level than we have nowadays. Uh, okay. So it was also was quite neat, I found uh, I should have put Auker, not not no But this 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 error is already reported and it probably be removed. So as yes, in there, there is one thing on the on the modeling point of view, which is something we we need to uh, also under the, the context of numismat.org need to address and work on, because as I mentioned, uh, the modeling should be s the same. Otherwise, the Sparkle queries will will not work. Uh, the great thing of, of CIDOC CRM, for example, is they have not only the ontology, but they also define how, how you should model your stuff, how you should think about your stuff to model it. Um, 
in, in numisma.org we, um, we decided not to go this way in order to keep the barriers low that people are able to, to adapt our ontology, to use our ontology, so they are not forced to think in a, in a certain way, they are not forced to think in an uh, event-driven way like Cyroxian does. But it also has its drawbacks in our case because now they are free to do it anyway and then it's also problematic. So I think the community, and I think this is also the message you gave, they should sit together, they should talk, they should agree on, there should be a communication starting. And once you do so, then you can do, uh, you can define how you want to map and, and what you want to do. So far we, we have uh, anonymismo.org. This is uh, a data sets, so there are, there are much more down there. I don't know how many are there, but, but there are 40. 40. 40 different institutes with their dumps in there. They are all following basically, the, or most of them following the documentation which describes how to um, put your data online for numismat.org. Um, what is a little bit missing or, or what is uh, a currently uh, a drawback from my point of view is most of the people provide only the data of the specimen so the weight, the diameter, and then they provide the link to the type, which is okay, but then we don't have any relevant data, and then I'm not able to do any checks because there is no data. And so this means we either take it and take it for granted, or because there's not possible to build a fingerprint, or we kind of enhance and and and. Uh, Improve the situation that the people really open their all of the data to really then allow to us to say, okay, I trust the data because I can I can see everything is uh, looks okay or most of it looks okay. Uh, at the moment, it's difficult. If you don't see anything, it's take it or leave it, and and it's uh, I think it goes in the same direction as, as you said. Um, that's it.